Hey, this is Dino, and today I want to walk you through the use of the Access Entity Policy in Apigee X to retrieve custom attributes that are set on a developer entity. Custom attributes are a common thing that we see in a number of different entity types in Apigee, uh, including the API product, the app, the developer, and even on the credential. With developer, what it means is you can attach any custom attribute um, with any sort of value, uh, and then that attribute becomes available at runtime during proxy execution, during the execution of the handling of a request. Uh, and then the proxy can do different things with that, uh, with that custom attribute. Um, maybe make a routing decision or a rate limit decision, um, and set defaults in requests or responses, lots of different options there. So let me show you how this works. Uh, for the purposes of the demonstration, I put together a test proxy, and it's got a single flow in it, a uh, single conditional flow, which uh, performs a couple of steps. It uh, performs verify API key, so very simple. Let's check that the API key is valid and valid for this proxy. The next one is the access entity policy, and this is really simple. It basically looks up the developer based on the client ID, uh, which is um, set by the verify API key policy. So the, the API key actually is the client ID, but after verify API key successfully executes, then you'll always have a context variable called client ID, and we can then use that with the access entity policy to look up the developer. What happens when we do that? Well, we get a new variable called access entity dot um, name of the policy, AE developer, which contains all of the information about the developer. And if I flip over to the documentation, for access entity, it gives some examples of what that um, the information it retrieves about a developer looks like. Uh, it's actually in XML format, um, but you can see uh, it will have the list of apps that are authorized for that developer: developer email, developer ID, um, and uh, interestingly, custom attributes on that developer. Okay, so we're going to show how to retrieve that at runtime. So access entity does that. Um, but how do I get it out of that format? Uh, well, to do that, we can use extract variables. And um, for that, we need to understand the, the X paths to the various elements that we want to pull out of that um, XML. So the source will be um, a variable uh, with the name access entity dot and then the name of the access entity policy that we just executed. So that's that. Uh, and then from the XML payload, we can extract um, developer slash email, and we'll add text in there to get the text value of that developer developer ID. This is maybe the more interesting X path. This is uh, the custom attribute with um, the attribute name of ATTR1 and that'll be put into the variable named um, contents of ATTR1, and likewise with ATTR2, it'll be put into a um, different variable. And for each of these variables, email, ID, contents, um, the two contents variables, they'll be preceded by the, develop the variable prefix that I specified in the policy, and that's developer. So it's developer.email, developer.id, and so on. After the uh, extract variables policy executes, at that point your proxy has access to those context variables. So you can use them in a sign message, you can use them in condition statements, you can use them to uh, format the message that gets transmitted to the upstream. You can inject it in headers uh, to the upstream and so on. Alright, so what do we need in order to allow this to work? Uh, we need uh, an app associating um, the developer in question to the, um, the product that wraps that proxy. So I've already got a product, uh, and you can see it's, it 
it allows uh, all operations, uh, all get uh, methods on any path in that particular proxy. So this product I've already uh, uh, created. Now let's go to the developer tab. Uh, we'll create a new developer, uh, and this one will be called January January's uh, Child, and uh, it'll be jchild at example.com. Just making this up, um, and that is the developer. Uh, you'll notice that in that initial create dialog, I was not able to set custom attributes on the developer, but I can do that after I edit. So edit the entity and the developer attributes or the attribute name that we used in that extract variables was ATTR1. So we're going to set that in here, ABCDE, uh, ABCDEF012345. Uh, that will be the value. Uh, and if we want, we can add a second one, uh, value of adder2. All right. So we've set that in the panel and now saved it and you can see the there are two custom attributes on this developer um, sounds great at this point we need an app that relates that developer to the API product so let's create a new one and we'll call it app uh, 2024-0123 um, and I'll use the same for display name the developer will be that one that we just created, which is um, January's child. Uh, we don't need a callback URL or any notes. We do want to add a credential. Um, expiry, I don't care about. We'll use that API product and add that credential. And I need to save it or create the app in order to get um, the, the API key. Okay, so what have we got? We got an app with an API key um, that looks like that. It is registered, this app is registered for the new developer we created, and that new developer has some custom attributes on it. All right, so let's um, go back now. I want to copy that API key. Let's go back now to the API proxy, and we'll start a debug session in my environment. Okay, that's started up. And now I want to send in a request using the given API key. So what does that look like? It looks like uh, we'll use curl, curl minus i, and my Apigee endpoint is located there. Test, verify, dev, adder is my base path. P1 is the flow path. And then this particular request takes an API key uh, as a query parameter, and we're going to pass in that thing that I just copied from the newly registered app. So here we can see the response. Um, that's the API key that I sent in. This is the product that the API key was registered for. Here is the new app that I registered. There is the app ID. This is the email of the developer. This is the developer ID, which is just a new unique ID. And here's the value of the custom attribute that I had registered on that developer. Let's go to the debug session and have a look at how this works. Okay, so the, the verify API key, as I said, um, sets, uh, verifies the key and then sets a number of different variables, one of which is uh, client ID. You'll notice that it sets developer ID and developer app ID, but not implicitly the uh, custom attributes for the developer. So if you just want the developer email or the developer app ID, you can get that, um, but you can't get the, the custom attributes. So for that, we need the access entity policy. So I pass in the access entity policy, and what I get back is a, a large XML document. It's so large that you can't see it here, but if I expand it, you should be able to see all the data. So this is the XML that I want to use um, access entity to look into. 
So access, uh, sorry, extract variables to look into. Access entity retrieves this data from persistent store. Extract variables extracts one or more elements from that large document um, uh, into uh, individual context variables. So there's the XML again. This is the extract variables policy. And you'll see I get um, developer contents of attribute one and uh, contents of attribute two. Uh, also the developer email and the developer ID if I wanted to extract that as well. And then finally what I do is um, in this particular proxy I've got an uh, assigned message policy that um, not this one, but the one prior. Uh, assign message uh, that sets the response. And um, actually, let me show you in the, um, the develop tab what that looks like. Assign message and the response. It refers to some of those extracted variables. So using the message template syntax with curly braces, I can inject into a, a message, um, the value of these um, context variables, so developer ID, developer email, and then the contents of attribute one, which is what you saw here. Uh, that's the output of that. Now, if I had a separate developer with different values for that named attribute, then I'd see different values here, and of course, we can do different things with them. Okay, so that is how you can use Access Entity to retrieve custom attributes on a developer in an Apigee API proxy. I hope this has been helpful. Till next time, keep it digital.